Now, because we're showing the textual representation of the day, if, for example, you wanted to go ahead and store a timestamp in a database table, uh, you could use backend functionality, uh, say in PHP, to actually deal with converting this date to a timestamp. Um, as far as I'm aware, the widget doesn't allow uh, timestamps to be displayed. Uh, but it's always better to show this in here and submit this data and convert it in the backend of your application. So now that we've done that, we need to think about what happens if we want a minimum and a maximum date. Now at the moment, we can go back um, for as long as, as, long as possible and uh, obviously uh, go forward for as far as possible. Uh, but let's say we wanted to only allow a date to be chosen from today onwards. Now we can do this using the min date function, or oh, the min date option. So min date, now we specify this as um, an uh, either as an integer or we can specify inside text and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a moment. For now I'm just going to say um, zero and uh, when we click here now you can see that uh, we only are allowed to select the date from now onwards so we can select today, tomorrow and that will go ahead for the rest of time. So, um, now that we've specified that, we can also go ahead and specify a max date. Now, the max date might be easier to uh, implement in textual form. However, we can, in fact, uh, say, for example, uh, max day three. Now, that would allow us three days on top of uh, the current date. So, we've got one, two, three, and then we can't click any further because we've only allowed three dates. So, this is extremely useful if you only want to allow specific dates either from today or a few days back or a time period in the past uh, to a specific amount of dates onwards. Um, now, we've supplied three, and that is uh, taking into account the actual days. Uh, we can also do a textual representation of this. So for example, we could say plus uh, one month, and that would uh, only allow one month onwards. So let's refresh. Uh, you can see we can go on here and we've got one month onwards from this particular date. So the 28th of this date uh, to the 28th of next date. And we can then go ahead and also supply um, a particular amount of days. So maybe two days, for example. So we use plus one month and plus two days uh, will lead us to uh, the 30th of August. So we're, we allow, we're allowed to do this in textual representation as well as well as the min date as well you could say for example minus five days um, what the, this would then do is allow you to go five days one two three four five days backwards uh, as well so with both these options you can specify either an integer which represents the amount of days or you can specify it in a textual form as well okay so the next option we're going to look at I'm just going to comma separate this and come down a bit so we can fit everything onto the uh, text editor um, is the show button panel now show button panel uh, is default set to false however we can go ahead and set this to true and what this will do is this will show a panel at the bottom so for example selecting today and done now in this case when we select a particular date we automatically activate the done function in essence uh, and this will automatically close the date picker uh, however if you implemented this in another way you would in fact be able to use these buttons so for example if a date was selected say the next day onwards uh, you could then press today uh, and that would jump to uh, the current date uh, so for example um, if you were I don't know wanted to show yeah like I said show uh, the tomorrow as the default date you could then press today to select the day and then if you wanted the user to select these but not close the box you'd be able to click done and that will just remove the box it's useful to have it here anyway just in case the user uh, decides to say select the 29th and then say oh I don't want to select that anymore they can either press done or they can click outside of the date picker area and that will close that uh, date picker widget Okay, so the last thing we're going to take a look at is the uh, animation types. Now, by default, it is set to show. Um, we're going to go ahead and specify show anim, so show animation. And there's a lots of different uh, options we can give this. They're all listed in the jQuery UI documentation. For example, we could choose bounce instead of the default show, uh, and this will bounce in the box here, uh, just depending on how, I guess, how animated you want the effect to look. 
Uh, for example, we could also choose fade in, uh, and that would just fade in the uh, date picker. Um, like I said, by default it is show, and when we refresh and click show, that will just pop out like that. If you wanted no animation whatsoever and you just wanted the date picker to appear, you can leave this blank here and what that will do is it will just show it like this. Probably for more corporate or more important uh, you know, websites, I guess, however you want to describe them, the show option is a good idea because it just shows the date picker uh, rather than including too much animation and making it look fake. So that's the date picker widget in the jQuery UI. As you can see, it's extremely easy to implement by just using the default date picker widget on top of the form field that you want to show, uh, you can easily implement this to attach to an input field. 